event that I know of, people talk about this in New York, and I know that Michiganders, when you hear people nationally talking about New York and their nursing home policy, you go, oh gosh, you think you have it bad. <laughs> Michigan not only sent sick COVID patients into nursing homes, and you would think they were readmitting people who were living in these senior living homes, Michigan sent young, sick patients into senior living homes. Like a buzzsaw. Knowing what we know about the virus, knowing what we know about who is most vulnerable, you tell me how that's a scientific approach to send a 20-year-old with COVID. What's wrong with her? She's nuts. Now, this happened when nursing homes told Governor Whitmer that they were not ready, but she refused to listen to the advice of the known medical professionals. And when I say medical professionals, I don't mean scientists just sitting on a board, I mean people actually treating and seeing patients and the consequences of this governor's actions. Yeah, so, Melissa science. Samuel is the president and the CEO of health, the Healthcare Association of Michigan, and she made it clear that they were not equipped to deal with this. Which brings me to the next point here, many of you know this, the veto from Governor Whitmer. Show of hands, who knows about the veto? What <laughs> veto? I'd like to hear about it. A lot of it. shouts. <laughs> hey look, FedEx uh, shirt right there. We appreciate it. Maybe you guys could uh, take care of the votes. <laughs> huh. I'm voting for president. Can you do next day shipping? I don't know. <laughs> so, senior living facilities in Michigan face such a disaster that there was a bipartisan bill presented in Michigan. And this is important, folks, and everyone watching at home, because this is a microcosm of the United States. It was a bipartisan bill, both Republicans and Democrats, that passed your state House and Senate. There were three basic demands. And I would say that these are sensible demands. Others would say that they are Nazi demands. Mm, I don't know, I'll give you the judge. Three demands. Don't send sick patients, COVID patients, in a nursing home. That's crazy. Don't send the mentally ill into nursing homes. And if you're going to send people into nursing homes who've had COVID, make sure they are quarantined in a separate facility. Bipartisan bill, Democrat, Republican support, made it through your state legislature. Veto from your governor. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky because as we were traveling to the wonderful state of Michigan, um, we found out that Governor Whitmer changed the policy a little bit in private, but what's interesting is the change isn't really a change. If you look at her reasoning for having vetoed that bill, it's the exact same reasoning as to the official change of her policy. Let me read it for you. When she vetoed the bill, she said, the bill was based on the false premise that isolation units created within existing facilities are somehow insufficient to protect seniors. Okay? The new order says the new care and recovery centers must designate a distinct area for COVID-19 oscillation. They must have a designated wing or separate unit. Well, hold on a second. How is that a change? You vetoed the bill because you said we already had it. <laughs> Does this strike anyone as a little bit odd? <laughs> Vetoing the bill was brought forward because medical professionals, science, you know, the folks we all deny apparently said, hey, 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 we need to protect seniors. She said, you don't need to. You guys are fine. And now she's instituting a new order only after we have been behind the scenes sending requests for information that have either been denied or not responded to, to the exact same effect. Which brings me to the next point here, the numbers. Real numbers. Yes, sir, real numbers. The real the numbers. Here we go. I love the headband. They don't know whether, don't know whether to give you a hug or jazz exercise. <laughs> give them a hug. I want a hug. So this is one thing we've been told, right? How many people here have been accused of denying science if you say that you disagree with the lockdowns? Yeah. Now, how many people here have either had a business or know people who own businesses that have been irreparably damaged? Hey. There you go. Many, science many, science. many. Okay. So what, what's the correlation here as it relates to COVID in states? Because Michigan has it pretty bad. Well, you can look at this chart. We have European countries as well as the United States, different states. Lockdowns. Did lockdowns help states? No. Oh. You can't argue that it helps sure. states, and you can't necessarily argue that it hurts states. I'm not making that argument. What about total population? Is it only states with huge populations that were affected? No. Is it as the media's been saying now when they shift and pivot? Population density. No, it's not population density. How about geography? This is where we started digging for numbers, and I tell you what, I thought I had it wrong. I had to have it confirmed by two, three, four doctors and people who were in running numbers. So. 
We can look at states with similar population densities and states that either neighbor or touch Michigan. We can look at Wisconsin, we can look at Ohio, we can look at Illinois, we can look at Indiana, we can look, I think I already said Ohio, but I guess we say them twice. I don't know. All right, stop it. They're not here. John Kasich's not going to show up running through the crowd. Now these states, although they have similar geographic locations and very similar population densities, do not have anywhere near the death rates. Even more, the states that have the directly comparable population densities, states like North Carolina, states like uh, Tennessee, not even close. So why is Michigan an outlier? Well, this is where we'll bring you up to the next slide. And that is the verifiable cover-up. I'm not a fan of cover-ups either. I, I agree with your move. So, this is where it gets really scary. To the point where you have to either assume incompetence to the level that someone is unfit for office. Corruption! Or the kind of misleading... Corruption! I hate to use the word evil, but covering up these numbers when people are suffering She's and dying. She's evil! Either way, it's unacceptable. She's so How many people evil. here have heard the reported number that in Michigan, 34% of all your deaths, only 34% come from senior living homes? Show of hands. What? That number is a lie. And no one else has been able to dig into this as we have before, and we're still waiting on some information from the governor, which you'll be filing to when we're done with this. So, yes. um, you look at it and you say, 34%. Well, you know what? That seems to track with other states. Let's look at the other states nearby. Again, those states that were mentioned, Ohio, Wisconsin. Yeah, those states all have, give or take, a fatality rate of the total deaths coming from senior living homes between 28 to 36%, depending on the numbers you use. Okay. So that would seem to check out. Until you take one thing into consideration, this was fine print, but I don't believe I read it in live. <laughs> Michigan's tracking, and it's the only state with these comparable states, doesn't include assisted living facilities, what? adult foster care facilities, what? or homes for the age. No. So let me be clear, all of these other states here, their total deaths, are 34% when you include assisted living facilities, nursing homes, adult foster facilities, and homes for the aged. In Michigan, it's 34% coming exclusively from some nursing homes. You know how many those are? 1,967 deaths coming from about 440. About 447 nursing homes. Now here's the, here's the challenge. Assisted living facilities, are not licensed in Michigan, okay? And I don't want to get nerdy here, but these numbers really matter, and they scared me when I read them. Assisted living facilities are not licensed in Michigan, but they are used in those total numbers from other states, so we would need them for an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. However, there is a website where you can go right now to verify which nursing homes, adult foster homes, and homes for the aged are licensed by the state. So the total number, 34% of all deaths in Michigan come from 440-something nursing homes. How many currently active licensed facilities are there in Michigan? Over 10 times that amount, folks. There are over 4,400 currently active licensed homes. So let's keep that into context. All those states that we're talking about, they're including numbers from thousands of locations and homes. For some reason in Michigan, it's only including one-tenth of that. Science, right? All you little science deniers out there. Anyone want to buy that all of these homes, nine-tenths of them, 90% have had no deaths? Not one? And that brings us to another slide here. The results. So we've got to do some digging and some extrapolating, right? When you don't have a governor who's transparent enough to give you the numbers, you have to try and guess. The average death, age of death for someone in Michigan with COVID is 77 years old, 75 on the low end. Over 70% of all deaths from COVID in Michigan come from 70 years old or older. That tracks with the average age of people in nursing homes when they start going in, folks. That's a high number. This makes it clear why we need these numbers. Now, like I said, I cannot assume, we can't assume anything at this point, but we also can't make an educated decision, can we, as to how we need to move forward as a state right, and a country. If we don't have the numbers, from these other three, 4,000 facilities, how can we know if a lockdown, which has decimated Michigan businesses, is good for this state and this country? We can. Release the numbers. Can we hear that? Let's release the numbers. Release. Governor Whitmer, 
when she vetoed the bill before and then secretly changed it more recently said, well, hold on a second, we don't need any of these rules that would prevent sending young COVID-infected patients into nursing homes because these nursing homes can handle it. All of these assisted living facility homes, these senior homes, I don't want to say just nursing homes. She said, they can handle it. Well, they said we can't. Well, science doesn't matter in an instance. She said, no, no, they have the oversight to handle it. Well, how can you make that claim when if you have children here, I would ask that they don't watch this next portion because it is disturbing. How can you claim that we have systems in place to protect the most vulnerable when you don't have the kind of oversight necessary to stop this from happening? <laughs> Up, I'm here to call for the truth as a starting point. Can we all agree on the truth to start off? Any left folks, right folks? Can all we just have access to the numbers and the truth? Let's go with the truth. Truth is good. And that man, Norman Blezzo, was beaten ultimately into a depression where he starved himself to death by a man named Jaden Hayden. That was the man beating him. Anyone here know? Well, they were in the same room together? It's COVID. COVID. Because of people across the country, people who are watching right now on the live stream, many folks don't know that. They think, oh, something went wrong. No, no. That man was placed, a known dangerous offender, with a senior citizen because they have COVID. Because of Twitter, not COVID! Because and of we're Twitter. supposed to believe that these homes were equipped and wanted to bring in more sick patients. Well, who could have possibly seen that coming, says the governor? Who could have seen it coming? Well, let me tell you, not only the medical professionals, not only those seeing patients, but the boy's dad, who actually said this, he never should have been housed, quarantined with the victim that he eventually assaulted. That should have never happened. Someone dropped the ball. I do think someone dropped the ball. And that someone is Governor Whitmer. It's time to hold her accountable, folks. So now listen, I want to go back here really quickly before I go to what everyone here can do, a call to action to Grandma Ruth. Grandma Ruth is 97 years old and she's a firecracker. I love her. She talks mad crap when we play Brummy Cube. She makes up songs about how bad I am. She accuses me of having a learning disability because she's in that generation where it's just okay. That's good. But I was, I was with Grandma Ruth, 97 years old, with the house that her husband built with his bare hands. That's a different generation, folks. Could I build a house with my bare hands? I mean, I could try. I wouldn't go on the second floor. The point is, I was sitting outside of her house, talking with her through a screen door. And uh, she might have let out a cuss word or two. She was a little frustrated, which she would be appalled to know that I repeated here. And she said, I want to hug my granddaughter. She said, who the hell are you? She said, who the hell are you? She said, people talk about how it's live your day like it's its last, right? Live this every day as though you're dying. Live it as though you don't have another day, right? And by the way, that's usually horrible advice because you should plan for tomorrow, especially if you're young. You should make sure that you're taking care of the, those folks that you love. But when you are at that age, 97, think about this, four, five, six months? Four, five, six months where she can't spend time with the people she loves most. And she said, hey, I'm 97. I'm willing to make that trade-off if it means that I get to hold my grandchildren and kiss my granddaughter. And who the hell are you to tell me that I can't? Now, I know that is not popular. It'll fall on deaf ears to those who support euthanasia. <laughs> um, but whether you agree with that opinion or not, all of this starts with something very simple. 
and we don't have it. And that is demanding the truth, knowing the numbers, because we know what we have is a lie. So what can we do? Right now, folks, we've made it very easy. If you go to louderwithcrowder.com, that's our website, one click, you can submit your very own request of information under the Freedom of Information Act, because she can't deny us all, okay? And just because if I have to see one more yard sign in this wonderful state that thanks the governor for keeping them safe. We have distributed today thousands of signs that you can put up in your own yard to let everyone know you're not up. And if you weren't able to get one today, again, on the website, we have made those files available as PDFs so you can print your own, give them out to friends, pass it on, pay it forward. Let's make sure that folks know what we're talking about now. One other thing that you can do, everyone please, show me your phone. Everyone here have a phone? One guy's gonna bring out a flip. Just a drug dealer with a track phone, okay. Everyone here has a phone. And what I want you to do is tweet at Governor Whitmer. Tweet at Governor Whitmer and use the hashtag Whitmer Death Toll. Every single one of you, if you can right now, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, Forward it to everyone you can so that we get an answer from this governor. We do not come with a sword. We come with the power of the pen and the power of all our voices. This is how change should come about in America. This is how conservatives bring change in America. And not a single Walgreens has to be burned to the ground. And I've got to say, we do have to get going here. I love this state so much. I, I, I wish that I could be here 100% of the time. It hasn't been the most business friendly, and your governor gives me the willies. So, I spent a portion of my time here, but I look at a state that at one point was the epicenter, not only of the United States, but the world. And I look at a state that surprised the hell out of me in the last election when I saw it get called red. And I saw the media collectively soil themselves in fear. Because they understood, as goes Michigan, so goes the rest of the country. And Michigan, at one point, was the heartland of America. I know that you folks are the heartland and the backbone of America. You made your voices heard in the last election. Right now, we need to make our voices heard to protect the most vulnerable among us because they have been systematically and proactively eradicated in this state and it has to stop and it starts with the truth. I'll leave you with this. Just recently, Governor Whitmer said, hey, this is all political theater and uh, we don't need to have independent quarantining centers because that wouldn't be scientific. But now she's called for an investigation into our president for mishandling COVID. I say to this, President Trump, if you are watching, that I and the people of Michigan all would like to say in unison, Governor Whitmer, you want to conduct that investigation and Donald Trump for mishandling COVID? Sure. All right, sweetheart, you first! Woo! Michigan, you first!